Thank you for tuning in to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. Love and support for parents whose kids are fighting for their lives. A weekly podcast created to support parents and caregivers of children diagnosed with cancer, where you will find resources collected to help you face each day with hope, strength, and courage. From interviews with the top experts in their fields, doctors, psychologists, chaplains, and inspiring frontline workers in pediatric oncology as they share their best advice, as well as day-to-day advice collected from other cancer moms and leaders in personal growth and development. From individuals who understand how hard it can be, I hope you will feel better prepared to cope with the day-to-day challenges of caring for your child. Hi, I am Laura Lane, and I am your host. My own daughter, Celeste, was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. In 2015, I wrote about our experiences in the book, Two Mothers, One Prayer, Facing Your Child's Cancer with Hope, Strength, and Courage. Since that time, I have dedicated thousands of hours to share with other parents and caregivers the resources, tools, tips, and skills and strategies I learned that helped our family stay happier, healthier, and more hopeful. My goal is to share with you my interviews with experts to support you as you care for a child with cancer. This week, before I introduce today's interview, I'd like to tell you about the projects I've been working on to better support you as a cancer parent and the sponsor partners who are helping to make it happen. I am most excited to tell you about our partnership with Royal Bank of Canada and Ronald McDonald House Charities South Central Ontario, where we are donating 100 copies and launching our Stronger Daily Planner for the most amazing moms on the planet. Everything you need to stay sane while caring for a child with cancer. A daily, weekly, monthly tracker for all things childhood cancer related. A planner to keep track of diagnosis, treatment plans, symptoms, medications, reactions, food intake, blood count tracker, plus everything else you need to keep track of for your family at home. If you would like to learn more or inquire about how to order your copy or how to sponsor copies for families at your local hospital, please visit our website, StrongerPlanner.com. This project has been made possible with the funding help of the Royal Bank of Canada, Ronald McDonald House Charities, South Central Ontario, to help us to distribute the planners, the design expertise of Mockingbird Designs, and impressive printing in Hamilton, Ontario. Our other exciting news is our 30-minute free webinar series, Coping Skills for Cancer Moms, hosted every Friday at 12 p.m. North American Eastern Time. I hope you will join me each week as I cover one of seven pillars to living with grace and ease. My goal is to share the valuable skills I learned when our daughter Celeste was diagnosed, give you a short activity to help you apply the skill, then open things up for questions, all in less than 30 minutes. If you are struggling right now, this might be just what you need to help you feel loved and supported and give you the strength you need to carry on one more day, one more week, one more month. To learn more, please visit my website, lauralane.ca. Now for today's episode, which features my interview with whole food nutritionist Tina Jo Stevens, as we discuss how we can use diet to heal our lives. Last week was part three of my interview with NLP practitioners Ed Olvera and Jackie Nagy, and we spoke with them about using cognitive behavioral therapy to help us become more hopeful. This week, Tina Jo talks with us about how the food we eat makes a difference in how we feel, and the importance of finding foods that heal and sustain our bodies, both for our children and ourselves. She talks about how to marry nutrition and how to make really good food taste good. In her words, to make it taste scrumptious. I hope you will enjoy the interview as much as I did. I am pleased to formally introduce you to Tina Jo Stevens. Tina is a highly respected gourmet, raw vegan chef, author, speaker, and coach, and a proud member of the Million Mom Movement. She holds a certification in plant-based nutrition from Cornell University and is a graduate of the renowned Living Light Culinary Institute. Chef Tina Jo is known internationally for her humor, down-to-earth approach to a whole earth-based food lifestyle. She has made her life's mission to bring super scrumptious, fresh, fun, and affordable 
whole plant-based foods and superfoods to the mainstream. One of Tina Jo's proudest achievements has been working with career patients, with cancer patients and caregivers in creating a culinary cancer fighting toolkit, which, help, which helps them to thrive during and after treatment right in their own kitchen. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here, Laura. Thank you for letting me be a part of this amazing summit that you're holding. Well, thank you. So the first thing I'd like to know is tell us what led you into the whole field of nutrition. What, what set you on that path? What set me on that path? Um, well, to be honest with you, it was my brother. My brother was diagnosed with cancer when he was in his 20s. I was in my 30s. And, you know, it's interesting because as I talk to more people who are um, fighting for a cure or trying to help others who have this disease, I'm finding more and more there's that common denominator of we've all been touched by this disease somehow. So for me, it was my brother. Um, I knew absolutely nothing at that time about nutrition or food or, or, or you know or anything. We were doing rehabs. That's what we were doing, and we took um, a traditional route. And I'm going to try not to get emotional. I'm sorry. I, I knew you were going to ask this question, and it still it still comes up for me. Um, it just wasn't working, and so I decided that I needed to take matters into my own hand, and I became an advocate. I became his best advocate. And through research, I started to find that food could make a difference. And so for me, you know, it was torn between two emotions. One, I was thrilled to find that information. And the other part of me was really angry because I thought, how come I didn't know this? How come my doctors didn't talk to me about food and, and how it can actually heal the body? And um, it wound up being too late for my brother, but I dove in after he passed, and I really made it part of who I am and my mission was to marry nutrition and how to make really good food taste good, make it taste scrumptious. You know, I'm an Italian girl, so I grew up in the kitchen. That's nothing new to me, but trying to figure out how to make something green, <laughs> you know, coming from an Italian family. That, we didn't have that. Everything was red and covered in cheese and it was pasta. And how to make, you know, vegetables really taste good. That became my mission. And um, that, that's how I started. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I love the kitchen myself. I love cooking. So I can, I can understand. So, how did you get first involved with working with cancer patients? So, obviously, you, you were supporting your brother, but what, how did you get involved what with led to that? What was the next step? Well, it's really interesting because um, I'm an author of 10 books. I have 10 uh, cookbooks and informational books out there, but it was this book, uh, my juice feasting book, that actually caught the eye of a doctor. And it was a doctor here in Mexico. So um, unbeknownst to both of us at the time, this, it's so, you know, serendipity. It, it's, it's beautiful how the universe actually works in your favor. Um, when he contacted me, I didn't know he was in Mexico, and he certainly didn't know I was living here. And we wound up through conversation finding out that we were 45 minutes apart. Wow. So I actually... No, right? How, how beautiful in the universe. So um, I brought my book and the program that I had created about juice feasting to his clinic to help his patients. And I'm a firm believer and was a huge advocate of juice feasting to help cleanse the body and to help rebuild the body, particularly during a disease such as one as, as cancer. But um, we were very successful in clinic. But part of the battle was when people would go home, they wouldn't be able to stay in the program. But, you know, when you think about it, juicing isn't really that simple because the program consisted of folks juicing about a gallon or more of juice a day. So people had to go out and buy 30 pounds of produce because that's what it would take to get one, ga one gallon of juice. So they'd have to buy it, right? They'd have to cut it. They'd have to juice it. They'd have to bottle it. Then they would have to clean all that up, and then they would have to drink it. They'd have to do it again and again and again, <laughs> day after day after day. So um, 
that's really how I started working with cancer patients. There's now a different program that we work with that um, is far more simpler. Um, but it was just interesting. It's interesting how the universe just leads you into a, a different direction, a positive direction sometimes. Yeah. Well, tell us about your culinary cancer fighting toolkit now then. What, what has it evolved? <laughs> <laughs> so what it's involved in, you know, it's really very simple now. It's actually three things. You know, it's protein, fruits, and vegetables. Very simple. Um, protein consists of um, a legume. It's a pre-digested tablet that one can actually take. It bypasses the liver. It bypasses the kidney. It doesn't create any fecal matter. And so what it does is it gives... It, actually goes to the bloodstream <clears throat> excuse me in 23 minutes so the body has all this energy and it actually helps to build muscle because what happens sometimes is when we're sick we don't feel good we don't eat and the body goes into starvation mode and will actually go to our muscle for energy so this helps Kind of trick the brain a little bit and the brain the body will use our stored fat for energy and it will actually help us to build muscle so we maintain our muscle mass and we have that energy which is so needed to fight any discomfort or disease in our body so the veggies <clears throat> now i am with a company that really believes in the the most purest of products so these are all organic they're non-GMO, they're gluten-free, um, there's no colors, no dyes, there's, I mean, this is all just food, real food and um, real superfoods. So these are powders, they're dehydrated, they're raw, they're living. So it's basically, you just take a scoop of it and you throw it in some water or your favorite um, nut milk and you shake it in. I mean, super simple. So one of these, uh, one of the formulas actually has 36 veggies in it. 36. Wow. So, so you talk about the positive compound effect that that can have on someone's health. And particularly for parents, too, you know, because we want to do the best for our family. We want to do the best for our kids. And, you know, sitting in the kitchen and trying to prepare 36 vegetables or to, to juice 36 vegetables or to get them to consume, that can be really challenging. So this makes it really super simple, very fast, and very affordable. Um, and then the fruits. The fruits are our antioxidants, and that comes in a um, just a cherry drink. It's absolutely delightful. Children love it. Adults love it. And cherries actually have the highest melatonin rates of any fruit on the planet. And so the natural melatonin actually helps us to get our sleep, which is, okay. again, really um, when healing the body. Mm -hmm. So it's those three things, those three things that are three core ingredients that really help us to thrive and to um, recover from any disease. We, um, and I predict uh, I live in, in Ontario, in Canada, and we're in the fruit basket of, of, of Canada. And we have right. cherry trees, peach trees, orchards, uh, vineyards. Um, and because there are so many farmers around here who have orchards with cherries, they talk about, uh, they're always promoting cherry juice and the effect it ha that it can, I know people who take it for arthritis, so it must reduce swelling. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Yeah, it's fabulous for uh, inflammation, so it helps reduce um, swelling, as you're saying. Mm -hmm. Fabulous for athletes. Um, and just, you know, in general, sometimes we take a lot of medications um, with this particular disease, so it helps to reduce the inflammation mm -hmm. that we have in the body. Um, really, really important. So, you know, um, having these in your kitchen really can make it life. Um, very simple and very easy. And again, we can take care of our families and take care of our, ourselves as well. Right. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So what is the advice that you would give to parents who still have cancer? What, is, what are the things that you would really recommend to them? What things would you share with them? Well, let's see. There's a laundry list. I mean, there truly is. I think um, Maybe first and foremost, cancer is curable. So really try to try to remain calm. You know, really do remember that. I think um, for me personally, um, it was my brother that um, 
went through cancer, but I was his guardian, so that really was my baby. He was my, Rob and I was his Batman, and so um, I held a lot of guilt. I held a lot of guilt because at the time I didn't know um, the benefits of food. You know, I, you know, it was I was a drive-through mommy for him. You know, it was in McDonald's. It was you know whatever I could actually get him to consume at the time. Um, so I held a lot of guilt, and I think the most important thing is just to release that and to be your best advocate, be your child's advocate, follow your intuition, and no one knows your child like you know your child, mm -hmm. and. Um, don't ever be afraid to ask questions. I think sometimes um, we get into a situation where we put folks on pedestals, and um, sometimes they're not all that. I think it's okay to ask questions. That's you know really important. And when it comes to to food um, and taking back your health and really taking control, I think it has to be you know one for all and all for one. This has to be a whole family thing. You know, there's no time for pity parties, and it really is about getting the junk out of the house. You know, no more processed foods, and really become aware of what organic means, what GMO means. Learn how to read the skews on on, on your fruits and your um, learn how to read labels and, and really be proactive. Um, you know, and it can even be simple things. You know, here in my kitchen, um, I have a little one, I have a four year old, and so I keep fruits out so that little hands can easily grab them, and that's just that's the norm. There's no junk in my house, and it's really important um, to be that advocate. and. I think for, for goodness sakes, you know, I think the most important thing um, also would be if you, because you're making a new lifestyle, you know, this is not a diet that you're about to undertake, this is a whole new family lifestyle, don't gripe about, you know, not being able to have the drive through or whatever it may be in front of your kids because they hear all of that. Um, so I think that would be, that's my experience and so that would be some of the things that I would share. Yeah, so it's important to model that for our children. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I know that for me, I found that as I changed my diet, I felt so much better. Um, I started to physically look better, but I had more energy and I just enjoyed food so much more. It wasn't just... It's so hard though when you're, when you're in the hospital and you're just trying to make do, but when you come back home, have that freedom, try and make the best choices possible. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And stay away from the hospital food. I mean, it really, it really does start to become like, you need to think outside the box. You can't be in that box anymore. And so, you know, you do spend a lot of time um, in hospital situations and if, it's the typical hospital food, you know, you got to stop and you got to remember, I need to pack up some food. I mean, just really start thinking, of, this is a, just a different life track now, you know, and really preparing yourself, preparing for success, preparing for, you know, your, your baby sticking home. I think it's really important. And, and being the role model, as you're saying, yeah. And our taste buds will change. Once we stop eating the junk, and you know, we start putting whole food nutrition in our bodies, really cool things happen is, is our taste buds change. And so when you go out to a restaurant or you go to a family's house and you have something and you taste how much salt is actually in food or how much sugar is actually in food, for the very first time it can actually be like, wow, this is, I can see how this isn't good for our bodies. I mean, we all know at this point, our food supply is loaded with sugar and salts and fats and artificial colorings. And I mean, it's just junk. It's really not even food at this point in time. And our soil is really depleted. There's very few minerals in our soils anymore. And our crops are continuously sprayed with pesticides. So it's no wonder that, you know, cancer and diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's and autism are, and obesity, you know, they're all on the rise. It's exploding. So back into the kitchens, and we need to take back our food supply. Yeah. 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 I, I, it, there's such a difference to, uh, we, we try and grow a garden. Um, this year we've got a lot of tomatoes, cucumbers, squashes, and a tomato fresh from the garden tastes so much different than 
and just a right the store bought mass produce. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's juicy and plump, but most of the time, you know, particularly if you're not buying organic, um, the tomatoes aren't even ripe. They taste rubbery. I mean, you know, there's a, there is a huge difference, as you're saying, you know, and if you, if you have the space to have a garden, by all means, have a garden. And gardens can even be as simple as just having some pots on your deck or on your windowsill. Um, and Sometimes it really comes down to, again, you know, superfoods and, and having um, products. That's what's so cool about, you know, 2016 is we can, we have science now. So we can take science and we can um, master products and food of 100 years ago. And that's pretty much what the company that I've done uh, represents. And it's really bringing it to the mainstream now, which is. Well, that's really awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I was thinking of parents who's who are in the thick of it when they're at the hospital and they're looking for things to ask. Me. Maybe they can be asking it. Hey, can you bring me some fresh? Milk? Can you bring me Absolutely. some garden? Um, that that's something that they can pass around, especially this time of year right now when people start harvesting. Um, that we need to be thinking about. Can we make it? We've got extra. Can we donate, donate it to the um, rock houses um, where families are staying? Give them access to some fresh uh, produce. I think that's a brilliant idea, actually. And you know, we think about um, now is really the time to stock up, as you're saying. And so we, there's canning, we can do fermentation. And all, for, fermented foods are so healing for the body, for the gut. I mean, they're absolutely amazing. And what you can do, you know, with ferments, the shelf life, same thing with canned foods. I mean, but not canned foods. Um, de dehydrated? Um, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Not canned food, but when you're canning and when you're canning food, I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about canned foods. But no, um, not from the when you're canning, you your own homemade. Uh, homemade. I mean, my my mom when my mom, mom was alive, that's what she used to do. And so you know, it's a beautiful thing. I remember walking into the pantry and seeing, you know, how gorgeous everything was. The peaches, you know, and the beets and the celeries and all the pickles, and it was amazing. So. Absolutely. Um, I, I think, you know, you really hit on something is also to not be afraid to ask for help for, you know, parents to, because it, when someone we love is affected by cancer, um, it can be very challenging for family members to figure out exactly what to say. You know, and sometimes, you know, some of the things that they say, um, quite frankly, are, are silly. It's just because they just don't know any better. They just don't know how to help. And so to learn to ask for help by saying, could you bring some, you know, some fruits or some vegetables over, or a great salad, could you bring me a great salad? Or, mm -hmm. or if you're a meat eater, could you make some homemade chicken soup? You know, that kind of thing, I, I think is, you know, would be really beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had three throughout the summit, all of the interviews that I've been doing, we've been talking a lot about reaching out, connecting, asking for help, um, that that's been a big key thing. And it's it's having ideas of what to ask for. Because at first people throw that question at you and like, I don't know. So if we get these well. things down, we get overwhelmed and say, I don't even know. So, so you start to write down when you have those moments, when when things are clear and you can make that list of, oh, what are all the things that would be really lovely um, that I can really use right now? Um, and then and those are little things that people can do and want to help. That was the one thing that I learned as my went through this with my daughter is people wanted to help. You just have to give them an opportunity and they will step up and do miracles. And wonders. I am a firm believer in that as well, sister. I think that's beautiful. It's really true. Um, and I, you know, I think sitting down and as you're saying, jotting out when you have some quiet time to, to ask for things. And I think it's also about, again, when you do come home, um, things that you can do to kind of like make getting in the kitchen fun and to make it easy because it needs to be easy, right? I mean, we want great food. We want nutritional food, but we don't want to be spending all of our time in the kitchen. There's far better things to do. And so, um, you know, making it a, a game with your kids, you know, if you're not, 
not used to eating a lot of vegetables or eating a lot of fruits, make a game out of, you know, well, let's, let's, once a week, let's add a new vegetable that we've never tried or add a new fruit that we've never tried or um, a little game that um, we just started playing here in the house was we have once a week, there's, a, there's Top Chef. So we all take turns at cooking. And my son is actually, He's four, but he's learning how to cook. He's learning the importance of that. And so talking about recipes, talking about food, and particularly when we're not feeling good, sometimes the last thing, and depending on what type of um, processes people are going through, chemotherapy, a lot of times there's chemo mouth. And so, you know, there's no taste. There's really no taste. So working, again, outside of the box and thinking about the other things visuals that we have we can see and we can smell and so sauteing some onions and uh, aromatics you know, onions garlic celery and kind of getting the taste buds going you know we start to salivate and so then we get hungry yeah. um, we also have our eyes serving something in a pretty dish or you know if your child is well enough to take them shopping and ask, you know, let, let's go buy a new plate for you. Let's go buy a new cup. Something that they can get excited about when you're serving them a smoothie or a juice or, or a salad. So it's, it, it's difficult as it can be. You really do need to take some time to try to think outside the box. And this summit is amazing because it really is going to plant a seed for so many parents. And even if it's not a parent, maybe it's a friend who happens to watch this, who knows somebody who has a child that's ill. And so, Laura, honestly, what you're doing um, is really a beautiful thing, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you so much. So my last oh. Oh, thank you. So my last question for you is, what website can we direct our audience to so they can learn more about you and they can learn more about your work and um, where they can access your cookbooks and things like that? Where can we send them? Beautiful. Thank you. So you can send them to Chef. TinaJo.com. It's C H E F T I N A J O.com. And um, actually, I'm in the process of creating a brand new uh, website, which is very exciting. So, what you're going to get is a landing page. And on that landing page, you can just go ahead and fill out your name and your email address and tell me how you came to that page because um, I certainly want to make sure that I, I can talk about to Laura about you, but I'm going to make sure that everyone who has seen this interview gets some free samples of some of the superfoods that I was talking about. Um, and also, I think I sent this to you too, Laura. I have a free cookbook for everyone, and this is um, the chocolate cookbook. So little, well, <laughs> little ones love it, but so do adults. But in this actually um, has some superfoods in it, and it will be one of the super that I send you so you can try one of the recipes which should be a lot of fun um, and a $50 gift card to if someone is interested in trying some of the products that will offset the cost and um, it's my gift to really try to help get these into the homes of people that really need it the most thank you that is so, so nice of you thank you Tina that's wonderful you're welcome. you're welcome again Laura thank you it's been an honor to be here what I love about this interview is how Tina explains that this is a family adventure, and she reminded me about things I had forgotten to do myself for our family. I appreciate all the great pieces of advice she shared throughout the interview from her experiences caring for her younger brother. Everything from letting go of guilt to remembering to ask for help. Such great reminders that stand the test of time. They were helpful when my daughter was in treatment and continue to be helpful years later. This interview was recorded a few years back now, and Tina's website has changed. So to learn more about Tina, please visit her new website at rawfoodrecipes.com. Please join me next week for my interview with Mind Movies founder, Natalie Ledwell, as we discuss how to focus on the positive through affirmations and vision boards. Before we end our show today, we have one last segment. Over the last few years, I have asked other cancer moms what advice they had wished they had known when their child was first diagnosed. I have compiled that information and will be sharing their advice each week. You can download the top 101 pieces of advice that I put together as a mini ebook at twomothersoneprayer.com. Today's advice comes from Kim. 
Let people help. Lay down your pride. Even if you think that you don't need it, let them. People want to make you a meal. They want to give you money. They don't know how to help, and this is how they want to do it. Let them. It took us a while to figure this out. Thanks, Kim, for sharing that. If you have advice you have learned along the way that you wish someone had told you weeks, months, or years earlier, I invite you to fill out the contact form on our website, twomothersoneprayer.com, and I will be sharing your advice with our listeners on future shows. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to listen to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. I look forward to sharing more experts and advice with you again next Wednesday. Please remember to take a minute to dis- to subscribe to the show. Thanks also need to go out to our Hope, Strength, Courage production team, which consists of my wonderful assistant, Tracy Ogilvie McDonald, Andrew Braun at Braun Audio and Audio Geek, music by Fizz Anthony, social media support by Marife Constantino, and graphic design by Amy Hosmer. To learn more about myself, Laura Lane, and to order my book, please visit lauralane.ca